Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thanks very much for being here. Uh, for those of you who aren't uh, part of the cabinet or extended cabinet, um, just maybe a little bit of why we're here. Uh, Capital for a Day was something we started uh, probably six, seven years ago. And we thought it was a good idea, instead of asking people to come to Montpelier and come to the legislature and testify and tell us all the challenges, about all the challenges you have and all the solutions you might offer, uh, when you don't have time to do that, we thought it'd be better for us to go to you, to out into the 14 counties of the state and uh, so we started Capital for a Day, and we we're doing just that. And we've learned a lot, gleaned a lot um, from, from all walks of life as we get out through the state. And we learned, again, um, we, uh, you know, as much as I've traveled the state, uh, both in my, my business life and construction and living here my entire life and, uh, and being involved in a few elections, it's, uh, I still find something new every single time I go to a different region of the state, someplace I've never been before. So we, uh, we take this as a, a learning, listening learning tour, uh, as well as, as uh, trying to figure out what it is we need to do uh, to make Vermont a better place to live. And um, again, so that's why we're here in Chittenden County today and uh, we'll be going throughout um, throughout the county in all different areas and uh, try and learn as much as we can. So um, I know for myself, um, uh, maybe I'll start and then we'll go around the room and talk about uh, the cabinet members, what they're going to be doing. Uh, but I'm, um, I'm going to be participating in a uh, public safety uh, round table. That'll be in Colchester, um, doing some business visits. Uh, one of them has to do with uh, cars, so uh, I'm happy. And, uh, and then uh, go to a school, uh, an after school uh, program. Uh, that's exciting as well, something that we worked on. Kendall uh, isn't here today, Kendall Smith, uh, but she, uh, she has, this is, she's taken the point on this uh, since day one, and we've been successful in developing more after-school programs because we think that's part of the answer as well. Child care, after school, uh, trying to provide uh, a place for, for people to go. Um, so we'll be talking about that. Um, and I think it's Val. <laughs> um, so I'd like to have Val uh, talk a little bit about this program. Uh, Val and I go back a long way. Oh ways. my gosh, um, years. <laughs> so many years. <laughs> yeah, for you. Um, she was part of the Blue Star Moms. Yeah. Uh, and we had a lot of chili contests. <laughs> chili <laughs> contests. <laughs> uh, you right. and Senator Mazza. That's right. That's his soul. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we had many of those in Colchester, but mm -hmm. she has been an advocate uh, for. Uh, the troops, and uh, then unfortunately uh, lost her son, and uh, turned this into something good. And and uh, it was a difficult time mm -hmm. for you, a difficult time for all of us. Um, but um, but again, she was it wasn't because of that, because she was talking about this type of thing long before that. And it was, yeah. So uh, thank you I for- think long before Josh even joined the National Guard, I was talking about a wellness rec center that, it's funny because it, I had this dream in my head and I was an aromatherapist for you know, many, many years. And I wanted to do something that would provide veterans and service members with um, alternatives to what they um, weren't able to get through the VA or other means. Um, so I had met with people and then um, it just never came to fruition, you know, and then um, after losing Josh, um, because of my relationship with Blue Star Mothers and, um, you know, I was the chartering president, so, so many people in the community knew my name um, that people, after we lost Josh, they just started donating money and it became um, 
too large of an amount of money for National Blue Star Mothers to be able to have us hold. So we, um, I called together some of um, the soldiers who were with Josh um, and said, you know, what do you guys want? What would help you? What, would you? what do you think would have helped Josh? And they all said, we just want a place to be together and play video games. Um, and so we started with a vision and then that was, so Josh ended his life in 2014 and we didn't open here until 2021. Um, so it was a long process, but what's interesting is, um, and frustrating, um, I was kind of doing it on my own and working at UVM at the same time. And um, people donate money right off the bat. And then when they don't see something um, produced or, you know, they don't, they don't see an actual um, tangible item that their money has, has paid for, um, <clears throat> they kind of, you know, go away a little bit. So um, we started working really hard <clears throat> looking for a place. Um, and then the Millers, um, Tim and Stephanie are the son and daughter of Bobby Miller. And um, they approached us, actually we went to high school with them and um, Stephanie is the ex-girlfriend of my husband way back in high school. So <laughs> there's a little connection there. <laughs> I'm surprised she wanted to help out. But <laughs> so we found this space and for some of you, you may know this is the old VA. Um, that was the exact entrance that veterans and service members walked into and they checked in there by where the pool table is, um, where my buddy John is. Um, and so they offered, they have wanted to help since we lost Josh and since we put this idea out. And then they said, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna provide your fit up for you. So they did the fit up for this space um, and have continued to do more and more projects. Um, Andrea can probably talk more about that, but. So it's been exhausting, um, but when you get the right people at the table, as you probably all know, things happen. And um, when we hired Andrea, oh my gosh, it was the first time in 18, 19, 26 years um, that I could actually breathe and just let things go off, you know, my shoulders and just, it's, I don't know if Andrea told you, but 30,000 people have walked through these doors since we opened. Um, in, it will, it'll be four years in um, March. Um, and you, it, healing for me, um, Josh is our only child and healing for me was having this as my baby. I mean, this place and just the lives that we know we've saved. We thought we would, we were hoping we would. And from those 30,000 people, obviously repeat um, visitors, but zero suicides out of those people that we know of. So it's working, it's providing a space that they couldn't get otherwise. Um, and Andre can speak more about the programs that we offer, but um, it's, it's providing something of a camaraderie that they have lost since leaving the military or um, especially for Vermonters, you know, we don't have a, a base per se here other than um, Camp Johnson, but it's just provided that missing link that they weren't getting before. So we're just, and I don't wanna say it among all of you, but um, zero government funds for this. This is, this is all done on donations and fundraising. So we're very fortunate to have the donors and community that we have. So, sorry, that was a long way of saying how it, <laughs> how it came to fruition, but. Well, you, you've inspired a lot of other people uh, as well, Val. And I think about um, what you've done uh, through tragedy. Mm -hmm. And I think about what Don Petro mm -hmm. has done with Jenna's Absolutely. house through tragedy. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of similarities there. Yeah. And you've chosen to give back. Yeah. And John and Andrea, um, uh, not this Andrea, not Andrea, but um, <laughs> <laughs> with Afterglow. I mean, they took their, their son's suicide and made it 
into something huge that's involving so many communities in the northern part of the state, St. Albans, Franklin County area. So it, it takes, um, it's interesting because I'm always the type that has to go and, and do something, you know, Josh wanted to play lacrosse in high school while well, they didn't offer it. So Josh and I started lacrosse with, you know, <laughs> hitting all the, knocking on all the right doors. And um, sometimes I feel like as um, a grieving mom that, you know, definitely gotten easier in 10 years, but um, replacing that grief, I think, with action is a great way to heal. Well, she, I can attest to, she, she was a force before. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> and, and I just uh, like to get things done. <laughs> and, and Andrea, uh, I, had, I didn't realize she was the executive director here, but oh, I, yes. I knew her from another. Um, from 14 Star. Yeah. yeah. And it was when COVID happened and yeah. 14 Star laid off, or 14 Star closed. Yeah. And um, Andrea was going crazy because she's the same way and needed <laughs> something to do and said, I want to volunteer, give me something to do. And um, we met because um, my friend, Benny Twitchell Stevens, whose son was deployed with Josh, she wanted to do all of the events for us. She was part of Blue Star Mothers as well. And so we went to 14 Star and met with Andrea and we did our first 11 Bravo event, which is a special blend or special um, beer release, right? Hand release with Josh and, you know, specific to the person you're trying to raise funds for or the, the organization. And then um, I had always wanted her on she our team. She used to joke all the time, you're going to come work for the Jennifer Lotta <laughs> <laughs> And here I am. And here she is. <laughs> and she, I, there is no way that this place could be what it is without Andrea and Courtney. Um, they're just amazing. And it's just incredible when you put people together as your cabinet. So. Well, thank you. Andrea, do you want to tell us anything more about Josh's house? Um, I, I mean, you know, Val touched on it. The biggest piece of it is connection. I always joke that this table is the most important piece of equipment we have here. Regardless of the gym, any of the, you know, even the kitchen, this table is really what draws veterans to Josh's house. Um, we do offer a ton of different programs. Our calendar over on the wall over here lists everything that happens every week. Fly time with Project Healing Waters. We have a coffee social this afternoon. We do Vets Rock, which is a Music therapy of sorts is just a jam session for musically inclined veterans. We host a combat vet support group, a spouses of combat vet support group. Um, we do lots and lots of stuff. And I tell the veterans all the time, whatever you guys want, I'll figure out how to bring it in. Underwater basket weaving, we'll get it here. I'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll make it happen. Just tell me what you want. And when Val touched on the fact that there's no governmental funding, what allows us to bring in all of those things that they want um, and be reactive to their needs is because we get to, you know, put the money best where it, where it's needed. Um, we do, you know, write a bunch of grants and but our fundraisers and our individual <laughs> she <laughs> and our and our individual um, donations is really what keeps this place going on a daily basis. One of the really interesting things, and I was telling Anson this earlier, when a new veteran comes through the door. It doesn't matter their branch of service, their length of service, whether or not they saw combat. There is such a cool bond that happens immediately with the other veterans that are already here. It's just this instantaneous, you're where you belong. Here's what we're having for food. Do you want a tour? Let's get you a cup of coffee. Um, it is such a cool thing. And it's not just combat vets that find this place super helpful. Anybody that served in the military, when they leave, they feel like they've lost part of their identity. And so this kind of gives them a place to be around those who get that. Um, and just the, just to see the value in, in those connections that are taking place is so cool. So cool on a daily basis. I invite you anytime you want to come by, talk to some of the veterans. Um, they love to share their story. They love to share why this place is so important to them. Um, and we'd love to have you anytime. And if you want to volunteer. No. <laughs> and that's the other thing. I mean, my goal and mission used to be opening up another two or three in Vermont um, and then surrounding states, New England, and then bringing it. Andre and I, you know, the dream was to go across the, the country and, you know, help other states build this. And um, 
I'm not sure I have that in me anymore, but if we can get teams that can work with us and build off from our template and plan, they might have something to start with that might help, you know, the stuff that we did wrong, they can fix. Um, so that's that's a goal. And I think what, what Andrea has done here is just taken this project and this idea and moved it into a really um, amazing resource um, that, you know, we hear from VFWs and American Legion commanders country, you know, across the country, national commanders come and saying, we don't see this anywhere else in the country. So if we can build this throughout the country, I think our numbers of veteran suicide would drop dramatically. So. Well, thank you both. Mm -hmm. oh, thank it. you. <clears throat> Thanks for hosting us. So. Let's go around the room and talk a little bit about where we're going to be, and who you are, what you, who you represent. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> sure, I'm Dustin Degree. I'm the Deputy Commissioner of the Vermont Department of Labor. I'm here with Commissioner Harrington. Uh, we'll be traveling around to a variety of businesses. Um, I'll let Mike let you know where they are, because I don't have the list in my pocket. Uh, but we've got our workforce development team with us, um, and talking about workforce and labor issues. and. Happy I didn't have to drive over a mountain at six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Governor, uh, Tate Brooks, Deputy Secretary for the Agency of Commerce and Community Development. Thank you again for hosting us this morning. Thank you. Uh, Governor, this morning we're gonna kick things off after this. Uh, and some of us will be heading over to Hinesburg to discuss housing, uh, an important issue. Uh, they've got about 365 housing units in the pipeline. Hopefully something we can show on the housing dashboard in the next <laughs> month. Um, on the housing subject, uh, mobile homes, as many of us know, are an important aspect of that equation. Some of us will be over in Milton also this morning uh, with some work going on uh, at the Milton Mobile Home. Um, we'll be teaming up with, uh, with Secretary Moore and her team and FPR, meeting with, uh, with the Vermont Youth Conservation Corps. Um, got an infrastructure going on over at Bolton Valley. So some of our team members will be there. Uh, we'll be over in Essex later today, uh, visiting a, a Glaval, which is a very innovative company dealing with uh, glass insulation. Um, uh, really out of the box and, and uh, an exciting, uh, uh, exciting company. Uh, we'll be working with Secretary Tebbets and his team, uh, heading over to uh, Conduit Farms. Uh, that's an entity that uh, was hit with some of the flooding uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, yeah, we're excited to be out there throughout the community today. Great. Thank you. Morning. Oh, of <laughs> Unfortunately, Tate spoke to most of the things <laughs> Your husband must be very happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's the perfect day to come and visit with the public. Um, going to YCC this morning, joining Wendy at Stone Corral, um, the Conant farm visit, and then part of a flood recovery panel uh, this afternoon in, the, in Richmond. So well, you're on the listening tour. <laughs> <laughs> listening is good. Good morning. I'm Sarah Clark. I'm the secretary of the Agency of Administration, which is the agency that provides services that keeps um, state government operating. So today, myself and my team, um, we are hosting a couple of discussions related to tax administration and education finance, kind of an education series, um, as well as we are doing a tour of libraries with the state librarian. they will fill in on some more of those details. Um, and I'm also going to go to the public safety roundtable and the recovery discussion. Zoe. Good morning, I'm Zoe Saunders, Interim Secretary of Education. Today I'll be visiting preschools and after school programs. Um, these are really critical aspects of our uh, system for education and ensuring that we can provide really quality um, educational opportunities from cradle to career. So I will be visiting the Little Ones University uh, Pre-K, um, King Street Center, and I'll be joining uh, Governor Scott at the after school program at Camel's Hump Middle School this afternoon. Alex, anything that Tate didn't mention? Tate covered them. <laughs> Jenny. Yeah, good morning, I'm Jenny Samuelson. I'm the Agency of Human Services. And I just have to say, it's really touching to be here. My dad spent 20 years in the military and we followed him around all over. Mm -hmm. And I watched my, my father and my two brother-in-laws and my sister-in-law make the transition out of the military. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is such a powerful space, so, so thank you. 
Um, today, uh, the Agency of Human Services, we're um, dividing up and spreading out. Um, we'll be joining um, a few of our other cabinet members at the UPK um, Child Care in Colchester. We'll be going to the Charlotte Senior Center with uh, our Dale Commissioner. Um, there'll be the Public Safety Roundtable, which we'll be joining with many of the other cabinet members on. A healthcare roundtable where we're bringing together um, some of the healthcare providers in the local community at, that will be hosting that at Home Health and Hospice um, out in Colchester. And then um, also spending some time at uh, EMS and Rescue with the area local rescue in Shelburne uh, today, and then the af finishing up with the after school program uh, with Zoe and the governor in the afternoon. So it's a full day. We're excited to be here. Um, and again, thank you for having us. Thank you. Special space. Kevin, Kevin Gaffney, I'm the uh, Commissioner of Department of Financial Regulation. Um, after this meeting, we'll be heading over to an entity that helps distribute uh, low-cost uh, aftermarket auto parts and see how they operate and offer uh, safe parts and keep costs down for consumers. Um, then we'll be heading over to uh, uh, agency and technology uh, insurance agency that uses a lot of different technologies has brought on a lot of new staff and has grown significantly and expanded actually countrywide. So just learning about how they do their business and how they bring in jobs here in uh, Chittenden County. Um, and then we'll be heading over to Essex High School to talk to uh, juniors and seniors about opportunities in financial services, uh, job opportunities, but also about financial literacy as they move on to the workforce or to college or to community college. And uh, then we'll divide and conquer. We're going to be with Commissioner Knight uh, with uh, the uh, liquor and lottery and licensing and insurance issues related to that and also in the health care reform and then ending with the recovery uh, meeting at the end of the day. So looking forward to a busy day. Great. Denise? I'm Denise Riley Hughes. I'm the secretary for the Agency of Digital Services. And so we are one of the internal support agencies for our fellow departments and agencies. And so I'll be joining other members of cabinet and listening to their sessions around services that we're providing digitally, also data that we're collecting and how we're using it and whether or not the systems that we are operating in under are meeting the needs of those community members that are participating. Just wait. Oh, we have to wait for the cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Wendy Knight, I'm the commissioner of the Department of Liquor and Lottery. And I want to tell you that we have a number of veterans at the agency, the department, and they are by far the best employees I have. So um, we should talk about recruitment. Um, yeah. Yeah, because I like those veterans. Unfortunately, <laughs> a lot of our, um, our demographic is the... Um, I'm not going to work anymore. I'm retired. Oh, oh okay. Well. There's a few younger vets, but. That's right. Uh, so uh, we mostly will be visiting with our uh, liquor lottery, uh, liquor licensees, so businesses that have um, liquor licenses to understand how we can serve them. We're actually having a tour of First Republic Brewery, uh, which is a veteran-owned brewery. Um, I have a number of team members that are out visiting um, retail agencies and 802 Spirit stores, specifically to talk about retail theft. Our new Director of Legislative Affairs and Communications is going to be joining me today, Olivia Kantiku, who started a week ago. And our Lieutenant Brandon King, who is a veteran, will be joining the Governor, Commissioner Morrison, and others in the Public Safety uh, Roundtable discussion. Great to be here. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Jennifer Morrison. I'm the Commissioner of Public Safety, which is the home to state police, but also Vermont Emergency Management, which um, there will be quite a bit of focus on flood recovery, mitigation, et cetera, during some of the meetings today. We are having the Public Safety Forum. Um, we'll be spending time with our uh, public safety colleagues throughout the county at various uh, points today. Um, flood recovery panel this afternoon. Uh, I started my day by visiting an in-home daycare. It wasn't on the agenda, but <laughs> I was driving by my grandson's daycare. <laughs> I was like, get a cup of coffee or go see the boys for three minutes. Um, and I would like to introduce Heather McLaughlin, who is our principal assistant. Uh, and this has been two years in the making to fill this position with just the right person. She is also a Marine veteran. So. Oh, great. Thank you. Doug, another veteran. Doug Farnham. Uh, yeah, before I jump into my schedule, I just want to personally say 
thank you. You are saving lives. Um, I transitioned out of the military in 2007 and it was not smooth. And uh, my best friend had a pistol, a loaded pistol under his pillow for five years after he served. So I'm having trouble focusing on the mission today. Um, so thank you. So Chief Recovery Officer, uh, related to flooding and pandemic, I'm joining Hanson at the farm this morning because I uh, love farming and I <laughs> Sheep and goats and miniature sheep, a couple of pigs, um, ducks. Uh, this, yeah. is, this is in the city of Montpelier. <laughs> Agriculture. <laughs> You're all right. Right to farm. Right to farm state. Um, then I'll be joining ACC. I hadn't told them yet, but I'll be joining them at, at the Bolton Resort. And then, uh, of course, the flood recovery panel in the afternoon. But again, thank you for what you do here. Mike, sorry, I didn't see you there. I wouldn't have called on you. <laughs> Not a problem. Uh, good morning, Governor. Good morning, everybody. Uh, and a special thanks to uh, Josh's house for hosting today. Uh, veterans in, in my family as well. So um, as we continue our conversation around growing and strengthening Vermont's workforce, uh, and retaining uh, workforce. We're starting off this morning after uh, here with v Valves in Williston, um, and then moving to OnLogic, uh, and uh, later today with Alliance Group. And um, all of those are either participating in some of our work-based learning programs or apprenticeship programs or are interested in potentially starting a work-based learning program. Um, so we're eager to, eager to talk with them and hear what we can do to help support uh, those projects. Uh, and then at the end of the day, we'll be rounding out the day with uh, an event at Generator Makerspace in Berlin. I'm here for June. <laughs> okay. 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 Here. I'm Hunter Thompson. I'm the director of telecommunications for the public service department. And we're going to start off the day going down to consolidated communications to talk to them about the fiber they're running and the work they're doing with the CUDs. After that, we're going to get a tour of the Vermont <clears throat> Center for Emerging Technologies to discuss the need for mobile broadband in the uh, digital economy. And then this afternoon, TJ Poor, who is the director of regulated utility planning, will be joining me and we will do a tour of Essex Hydro. Thank you, Hunter. And uh, June is another veteran as well. And she's the uh, mission. Thank you, Governor. Uh, Anson Tebbets, Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets. Uh, from here, we'll go to Wilston, uh, a relatively new farm, farmers. Um, they have goats and chickens, but uh, mm -hmm. the model is people come to the farm, buy the animals live, and they can process them and you can take them home. So it serves a really- pets. No, no. So, yeah. From Obama's farm, we'll go to uh, Ag Education. So, we're going to go to UVM. Uh, there's a club there. They have about 60 animals that need to be milked every day, a herd of Holsteins. So, that milk is turned into ice cream that you can find at UVM. But that um, and cows need to be milked three times a day, so the cream students uh, manage the herd there. So that's on Spear Street. From there, we'll go to the round table. Uh, Secretary Moore and myself and some others will be meeting with a core group of farmers about flood recovery and, and flood mitigation uh, in Richmond. And then ending the day uh, at Sherpa Foods. At Sherpa Foods uh, manufactures uh, Momos, um, but they, from our perspective, they, they've come under meat inspection because they have a vegetarian but a meat inspection part of it. So they're emerging growing business. Um, so we're gonna check in with them. Swing over to here. Fun fact to share, well, <laughs> Governor Scott is being adjusted. <laughs> oh, that was a good comment. <laughs> Sorry, position, wait, seating, pos Never mind. Um, Anson's, so my other hat is I work at UVM ROTC and I've been there since 2000. Uh, 13. And Anson's son is a cadet at Middlebury College, and John Zanin is um, an alum from ROTC, so it's nice to have that crossover and that connection. So. He's having a wonderful time. Oh, he's amazing. I love him. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Secretary Flynn. Thank you, Governor. Um, 
I'm Joe Flynn. I'm the Secretary of the Agency of Transportation, and that's the DMV and VTrans. Cover rail, transit, um, aviation, and obviously everything else you would associate with VTrans. I would like to just echo the comments before I start, though, of, uh, of what you're doing here. There are veterans in my family. My daughter is currently still in service. Um, and when Kryn Miner yeah. exited the military, I hired him when I worked at emergency management, and we went through a couple of episodes with Kryn, and eventually he lost. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, at a distance, can share some of that. I'm very close to Amy. Well, I, I, I met with Amy a few times mm -hmm. after that. Um, today, I, after this, I will be going to Commissioner Morrison's favorite construction project, Exit 17. <laughs> it's not the drawbridge, it's Exit 17. <laughs> oh, there's something to do with the Grand Isle. Uh, what is it with you folks up there? Well, I'm, 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 there's it's a lot of us. Transportation dollars. Constantly. Right. <laughs> I'll be spending a fair amount of time there, actually. It, it's, a, it's a highly complicated project. It's not just the construction of a new bridge over both barrels of the interstate while the interstate remains open, but the deconstruction of the existing bridge eventually. Realignment of the on and off ramps um, and all of that while widening and changing all of the interchange with Route 7 and Route 2 um, and trying to keep traffic moving with as little interruption as possible. Which um, we had to get an Act 250 permit for. We had waited a year to get an Act 250 permit that eventually told us we needed to do nothing more than we had already said we needed to do. So uh, we, we don't need any more reform. <laughs> After that, Sar I, sarcastically, he said. <laughs> yes, a sarcastic person would say. Um, after uh, later on, though, I do want to join the governor and others at Glavel. They do produce an aggregate product, um, which is of interest to us. And I've actually learned, Governor, there may be some of that product actually on Exit okay. 17 in another fashion. Um, so I do want to see that. And then I'll uh, end the day later at the Richmond round table on recovery, flood recovery. There's a lot of, a lot of certainly Chittenden County towns as well as many towns around the state of Vermont, both in 23 and 24. So it's, and uh, I'll be at District 5 before I leave this area, which is across the fence, but seeing Commissioner Knight already asked about labor, it's a really close walk to District 5 and we have a 34% vacancy. So I'd be happy to leave my card if you know anyone who's looking for uh, Young, young or old? Young yeah, old. there you go. There's we no do. age limit on a CDL as long as they can get it. <laughs> That's right. Interesting because I feel like I've had a, a number of people have said, oh, I just want to go drive truck. Well, I will talk uh, to you after. <laughs> 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 Far more fun to drive liquor trucks. <laughs> <laughs> just, we have fire trucks. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> right. We do. Um, Andrea, is um, Lloyd still coming? He retired. Okay, so is anybody filling that position? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. We, we used had to have a veteran okay. representative from Department of Employment and Training that would be here every Friday afternoon to help veterans or veteran owned companies that were looking for employment. So, uh, but he has since retired. He's actually in Tokyo this week. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, as of right now, I don't believe there's been anybody that filled his shoes. So. Boy, good drill. Well, I don't know if you know him. He can retire from the guard. Yeah. Worked for, the, worked for the Department of Labor for yes. many years. Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. After he retired from the military. Yes. Yeah. The star of the Daily Pandemic Show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mark Levine, Commissioner of Health. Uh, <laughs> With regard to the day, uh, Secretary Samuelson said a lot of what I'll be doing, which includes the Public Safety Forum, the Healthcare Roundtable, and meeting with the Chiefs of our EMS services in the region. Um, but more importantly, um, and coincidentally, uh, Tuesday night I had the honor and privilege of being able to give grand rounds at Central Vermont Medical Center uh, on the topic of the Governor's Challenge, uh, Mission Connect. Uh, which is the suicide prevention uh, programming for service members, veterans, and their families, uh, which was met with very, very positive sentiment from a medical audience uh, who actually uh, are very connected to the trauma and the <coughs> issue of suicide, but not as connected with the whole veterans aspect to it and what special uh, programming is coming out of all of that. So uh, that was a very positive. And then um, 
just sort of secondarily. I don't think it's a great HIPAA infringement, uh, but I never knew Josh, but having been his grandfather's physician for several oh decades, I felt that I did know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Lenny? Lenny. Oh yeah. my gosh. Oh, so, okay, now I might cry. <laughs> well, we went through that whole I did time not know period, that you but also physician. sort of what the aspirations were. Wow, oh my so. gosh, I have chills. Oh wow, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, he unfortunately passed away in a few years ago. Yeah. Wow. Have I missed anyone? Librarians. Sorry. It's fine. Um, I'm Kathy Delnau. I'm the state librarian and the commissioner of the Department of Libraries. And we have a full day visiting some other important community centers. It's really wonderful to hear what you do here um, at Josh's place. But we'll be at Westford Public Library this morning, followed by Milton Public Library. And then there are actually two libraries in Jericho that we're going to today, both the Deborah Rostin Memorial Library this afternoon at 1.30, and then following up with our final stop of the day, the Jericho Town Library. So please do join us at those. And my colleague, Jeanette Schaefer, who's the Assistant State Librarian for Library Advancement, will be there with you. Jericho has two libraries. It, it <laughs> strangely does. One of them, Jeanette, help me with this. One of them is very unique in that it's a library district. Yes, it's the only library district in Vermont. And that's for Jericho and under. And then one is a municipal library in Jericho. Very intellectual class of people who live in Jericho. <laughs> <laughs> We don't know them, but... What if they graduated from the high school? <laughs> no. Oh, no. Ouch. But... She have children. I have children who have graduated from yeah. high school. Yes. Me too. That's why I said that. <laughs> Governor, I just wanted to point out that we all drove in past the 10th Calvary Project, which is one that uh, we provided brownfield cleanup funding for, a very large, actually, brownfield cleanup uh, award to convert those buildings into uh, housing. So, yeah, nice project. Another thing that you know, I'm very proud of in terms of the brownfield project that we accelerated a um, few years ago, and it took all of us working together to try and make that happen and convince the legislature that it was the right approach because it's such a bottleneck with all the brownfields we have in the state, no money to clean them up, and it really hampered our ability to grow the economy in some areas. So. So thanks, I mean, this, that's a great project and we've had many, many uh, across Vermont since. Yeah, and the Brownfield Project program is nice because most of those Brownfields are in downtowns where we're trying to encourage development. When I was a brand new police officer in 1990, I had an apartment here at 40th and Allen. Yeah. And my dad was so excited because he had spent a summer here in the when he was in the Air Force and they used the parade ground for exactly that, for you know drill and exercise and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so he was really excited till he got up here and saw how sketchy it was in 1990. <laughs> and it was, it was really not what it is today. So it's been really exciting for me to see um, how 40th and Allen has really come back to life and really become a grand place once again, because you could always sort of see it way back then, but it was definitely sketchy, <laughs> the, the apartment I was living in. Mm -hmm. And this is Colchester, right? This is Colchester. And so the, when the sheriff, new sheriff was in town, she cleaned it up? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. No, I think the renaissance began before I became the police chief in Colchester. It's trying to help you. I know. Yeah. I, I will have to take credit for that, but it's not me. I just want to ask, you, do you think you'll all have time for a tour before you leave? I don't want to, what I just want to put is. that in your ear. If we do it right now, yeah. we can. Yeah. Okay, I didn't want to cut off your meeting at all, but yeah, I did I want to offer that Andrea could give a tour because she explains it so much better than me. <laughs> okay, if you're sure. With my broken toe, my gift. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yesterday was a wonderful day for me. Oh, dear. Yeah. Um, as you can see, we have a full kitchen, so we offer a hot meal every single day. We have a meal train online, which always needs people to cook. Um, so or donate a gift card to a <laughs> or donate from a restaurant. Absolutely. Um, people in the community will often sign up um, to provide a meal. Uh, if not, Courtney, who most of you met, she's the house manager. She will take care of cooking something and 
has become probably the resident favorite cook of all of the <laughs> veterans that come here. Um, she does a tremendous job. Mm. Uh, when you first walked in, we have a veteran marketplace. It's been about six months in existence. We partnered with the Vermont Food Bank, so we get a shipment from the Vermont Food Bank once a month, but we also participate in the Hannaford Food Rescue. So every Saturday we head to Hannaford on Shelburne Road and load anywhere from 400 to 1,000 pounds of food, whether it's produce and frozen meat, sliced meat, deli, um, bakery goods, um, things that we use in the kitchen to make meals with, but we also have a refrigerator and a freezer and some shelving in there. Veterans can come in and help themselves to whatever it is that they need. Um, we're gonna be actually putting something out on social media. This is that time of year where everybody likes to feel like they're doing something good. So we're gonna be looking for stuff to fill the shelves in there. Um, and so that is open seven days a week. A lot of area food shelves are only open a couple of days a week with certain hours. This is open whenever Josh's house is open. So they're able to come in they don't have to ask permission. We have bags in there. They just come in get what they need. Um, and don't spread this around, but they don't need to show a DD-214. No, so we don't require any proof. Yeah. Um, we kind of figure if you're in here and you're not a veteran, it's not going to take long right. before somebody figures it out. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably won't come back. So, um, as I mentioned, this table is super important. Anywhere from 25 to 40 people eat here every single day. Wow. So they come in for lunch and, you know, we do get a lot of repeat customers, um, which is wonderful because if they're coming back, it's because it's working. Um, what we don't want is someone who comes the first time and says, nope, never going back there again. Um, so th those repeat customers, and as those continue, the numbers of those repeat business continue to climb, like we see that it's an important thing. Um, we've got, you know, TVs throughout. There's sports packages and entertainment packages and, and um, the only thing that we require is that you not discuss politics or religion. Jeez. Those are two. <laughs> <laughs> so We're not old yet. <laughs> um, <I'm> here. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I do tell them they, there's picnic tables outside. They, yeah. you, know, if you want to have those discussions? That's where they could take place. Um, and those are really as long as everybody is respectful of one another and treats every we don't really we don't police conversations we don't we just try to keep away from those that could cause uh, a lot of division so um, we have our recreational area over here and we tell the veterans too this isn't just for them it's for their support system their family their friends so we encourage them to bring people with them um, we have a calendar on the wall over here that lists all the things that we do on a regular basis uh, we do a ladies night once a month we at, it's actually tonight um, we kick the men out at five o'clock and we bring in um, an activity for female veterans and spouse, female spouses of veterans. One of the things that we found out really early on after opening the doors is a lot of women weren't coming to Josh's house. A lot of the pictures they were seeing on social media were uh, male veterans, which you know, demographically speaking would make sense. Um, so they weren't quite sure if this was a place that was safe for them. So we decided that one night a month it would be just for them. We, tonight we're doing some yoga with actually a, a female veteran. Um, and so what we found is that when they come in and they see the space and they're here and they get to know us and that they recognize it as a safe space and they come back at other times so that they can utilize the other resources that we have. So that's really been a, a fun and really a productive uh, evening for us. We have a job posting board. Like we mentioned, we don't get a ton of veterans that are looking for jobs, but we often get companies that are looking to hire veterans. So if they send me a job posting, I'll put it up on the board. Um, on occasion, we'll get one or two that are looking for jobs. And so we've been able to make a couple of connections in the last couple of years. We have an info board that lists things like if you're facing homelessness, who do you call? If you need help registering for the burn pit registry, this is who can help you. Things of that nature on that board, as well as our um, bifold over here that's full of information. Um, we have a conference room and classroom. That actually gets a lot of use for, from other organizations. We have other veteran service agencies that have like monthly meetings here. The Air Guard and Army Guard use this as an off-site meeting space or a team building space, which is fantastic. It also brings them in that they normally wouldn't come into Josh's house because 
you know, they, they assume it's for people who are no longer in the military. We try to encourage them. Anytime you guys want to stop by, Kim Johnson's right there. I don't know what you're having for lunch, but I know what we're having for lunch. <laughs> um, we have a library down the hall. Um, and it is chock full of books. Um, I encourage veterans, if you're gonna bring new books in to donate, you have to take the same number of books with you because <laughs> we're kind of busting at the seams. Uh, we have a massage room. Uh, we have a practitioner that comes in every Thursday and uh, provides free massages to our veterans. She doesn't charge for her time. She donates her time and she's here every Thursday afternoon and the veterans love her. We're currently booking massages out toward the middle of December right now. That's how popular that program is. Um, and then at the end of the hall, we have a gym. We have a thousand square foot, fully equipped gym um, that was kind of my favorite project to do. We opened it after Josh's house opened. But what it's what we're seeing is it's benefit. We obviously know the physical mental health connection, but what we didn't realize is it would help to bring a lot of the younger veterans in. When we first opened the doors, 90% of our demographic were Vietnam era veteran or and some World War II veterans actually. Um, who felt uncomfortable going to a public. Place. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so having this open um, started bringing in a lot of the younger veterans the, the, that were looking for a reason to come to Josh's house. Didn't want to come to Josh's house just to hang out and gripe about their lives or whatever, um, which doesn't really happen. Um, and so by having the gym, it gave them a reason to come in. And once they're here, after they're done working out, they sit down, they grab a Gatorade or a coffee, maybe something to eat. And then they end up visiting with the other veterans that are here and they keep coming back, whether it's to use the gym or not, they'll come back and they'll hang out and, and realizing that this isn't just a place to come and complain, that it's actually a great place to come. They can just interact with other veterans. They can you know, read, grab a book out of the, they can sign up for a massage, they can get a great meal, um, and that it is a comfortable and, and welcoming space for them as well. So we also have a laundry room back there um, over the last few years. We've seen a few more veterans either in temporary housing or homeless, um, and they don't have a space to do their laundry. So with the gym, we have a shower. They're able to shower. They're able to do their laundry. We supply everything. The only thing that they have to do is do their own laundry. I'm not going to do it for them. <laughs> um, but they're able to do their laundry. They're able to take a shower. They're able to have a hot meal. You know, we're open every day of the week, so they're able to come here. We have some that are here when we open at 9, 9.30 until we close at 8 o'clock at night. So... Um, Having that has been really helpful for a lot of them, especially those that, you know, the one or two that were looking for employment. Being able to come in and clean up before going to an interview has been really helpful for them. So I, I wanted to mention one more thing. I don't know if you covered this before I got here, but one of the most challenging things, I think, in getting veterans and service members here is that, well, two things. First is that um, they feel like they're taking away from other veterans if they come here. And that is not the case at all. Um, it's, it, you just have to come here and experience it to know that that's not what's happening. And I think veterans are in that mindset a lot of I don't want to take away from others. Um, it took me forever to get my dad here oh because that gosh. was why he yeah. thought like for the first year he wouldn't come here. He's like, I'm good. Like I don't need somebody else's food. Leave that for somebody that needs it. Right. But he came because he was cooking, right? Yeah. 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 So he had, a, he had a reason to come here. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, um, other than what Andrea already touched on, that you know, this I I think I marketed this as a place for if you have PTSD, come to Josh's house, and it's not that <clears throat> at all. It's morphed into just a regular come and hang out type place. The other thing is, they're finding it hard to just leave the parking lot or even get to the parking lot, leave their car, and open you know walk through the doors. Um, we have VA um, caseworkers, peer support workers who actually bring every new client that they have here. And then once they've come here the first time, yeah. they'll come back. Um, I always tell the story of the, the veteran in the National Guard who, <laughs> who fought and fought. He always had somebody, he had somebody who was trying to get him to come for months. And then once he walked through the doors, he came back like three times that day. <laughs> so, you know, if you, if you just, if you know somebody, come on in, bring them with you, you know, just say, hey, I was over at Josh's house. What a great place. Let me, you know, let me bring you and show you what it's like. So, 
I just wanted to put that out there. Yeah, because we can talk about it till we're blue in the face. Right. It's when a veteran says to another veteran, hey, this space is amazing. You need to come check it out. Yeah. That's when they come through the door. Yeah. One more plug. <clears throat> BT Shares. Uh, Josh's house is listed on BT Shares. Yes. For yes. those who are struggling uh, to figure out where to put all their money, <laughs> uh, this is a good, great cause. Thank you. Yeah. And you're free to you wander can around me today. Let me let me tell you that. So, What's that? For VT shares. Thank you. Uh, oh, yeah. Thank you. I think yes. I think we have a social media post going out. Yeah. Soon about that. Yeah. It's that time of year. We also have a garden um, mm -hmm. out that a gym. female veteran takes care of. She plants it. She weeds it. She harvests it. She takes it apart this time of year. Um, we had an Eagle Scout do that as his final project, so he had to come and pitch the budget and the whole plan. But. Yep. We have a couple of Eagle Scouts here. Oh! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was uh, Count Dan Eden, who's also in the staff. Oh, that's right! Him. I forgot about that. Anybody else? <laughs> it's just nice for them to go out and, you know, pick something out of the garden and just cook that as part of the, you know, and I know you guys all have incredibly busy days, mm -hmm. um, but you're always welcome. Today at 1030, we have our veteran coffee social, and that's a really great unstructured opportunity for new veterans to come in, but also the veterans that have been here regularly, they love to talk about this place. So um, if you're, you know, if you get 10 minutes and you want to have a second donut or, um, <laughs> second but to come by and, and, you know, just to chat with them. Um, they love to open up about their, what, what this place means to them and also the things that they've been through. So, yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Both. Thank you. Yeah. Finally, we got you here. <laughs> <laughs> 1030 coffee every day. Every day. <laughs> no, 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 no. Alex Farrell, Commissioner at the Department of Housing and Community Development. Today we're going to be visiting a number of number of sites, number of uh, mobile home parks. We're going to visit some folks who are trying to get some workforce housing online, one of which is at one of our local ski resorts. So we're going to see a lot that's going on. Heinsburg is one of our blossoming communities that folks will know has looked different than it did 15, 20 years ago, and we're going to go see why. They're doing a lot with their local zoning, they're working with builders, and they're making some thoughtful development happen that still protects their environment. So beautiful things happening in Heinsburg. We're really excited to go see it up close. Well, it's great to be here uh, today at Josh's house, and uh, it's something that I've worked with Josh's mom uh, on for a number of years, heard about her dreams of of building something like this, and uh, it's nice to see that it came to fruition. This is just a wonderful place for veterans to come, to, for young veterans, old veterans, it doesn't matter who, um, to talk to one another uh, because it's, a, it's an incredible step 
moving out of the military. Uh, my dad was a World War II vet, and um, he was a double amputee as a result, and, and I bet he wished he had something like this uh, when he got out. So this is, uh, again, turning tragedy into something good and wonderful is something that Val has done. And I think about the Tatros, uh, Don uh, yeah. and Greg Tatro, who lost their daughter and turned it into Jenna's house. And this is just, again, it's inspiring. And uh, I think it'll move a lot of people to doing something more, uh, to help their neighbors, to help their community, and to help veterans in particular. So it's great to be here. It's a wonderful place, and, uh, and I'll be back.